you can hear us in the Parliament of Ghosts, feel free to follow the voice. Okay. Yesterday, we started our public program. Uh, we call it Transfers from Osnabrück to Tamale, which was a, uh, was a good was a good session, meeting new people, discussing ideas around or um, beginning with the solo exhibition on Sobari Mahama, which opened in Osnabrück on July 8th. So, uh, at least yesterday, we were able to unknot our, our director is here. Please say hello to our lead director. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, you, you know, so yesterday, for those who were here, we, we saw uh, myself, again, I'm, my name is Kwesi Ohenyaye in Ghana. Everybody knows me as IUB. And um, I am co-curator for the project, but we also heard from Bettina Klein, uh, my Berlin-based colleague with whom I curated Ibrahim's solo show. We also heard from uh, Anna Yela and Juliana Shikedant, the directors, co-directors of the uh, Kunsthalle Osnabrück, which is the commissioning institution. So they kind of invited um, us to do this project and they have been extremely supportive in pulling the the strings going through the famous German bureaucracies and intricacies to make things happen, you know, and also even really traveling the project here logistically and um, in terms of uh, the the means we had, we still had to, you know, go extra miles to, to bring it here. So we are grateful to them. Um, so yeah, transfers, Ibrahim, is Ibrahim around? Okay. Okay. So we also heard from Ibrahim Mahama, the artist whose practice um, is the crux of the discussions that we'll be having here. But we also knew um, through that we understood through his practice, we are also extending or expanding the conversation. So um, a lot will be built on from there. So we continue today. Yesterday was dealing squarely with the premises, the inspirations, the, the whys, the what's the house of the project. Um, today we want to cast our perspective a little further back. So, so we want to give the, um, a much broader picture because the tr uh, transfers as a solo show is also part of the 30th anniversary um, celebrations of the Kunsthalle. So it's not the only exhibition that was commissioned. There were actually two main exhibitions, but then there are also satellite and peripheral events. And uh, we want to get to know the institution, you know, through which this project was made possible. And we welcome, um, that's what you see here. That's what we're going to do now. And for the next hour, that is, uh, so I'll introduce our speakers briefly. Anayele and Juliana Shekedans, since 2020, are co-directors of the Kunsthalle Osnabrück, one of the most important platforms of, for contemporary art in Northern Germany, located in a former monastery an adjunct church. Curatorially, they work with annual themes such as disappointment in 2020, accessibility in 2021, or romanticism in 2022. Based on a structural interest 
and in the sense of a learning institution, the annual themes aim to tackle thematic complexes in a suitable, in, in a sustainable and more comprehensive approach through new artistic productions by internationally renowned artists. The Kunstale Osnabrück's programs, which are conceptually, which are conceptualized as processual and interdisciplinary, address socio-politically relevant uh, issues and place an explicit focus on the inclusion of social processes that understand these issues as an integral part of cultural production. With its experimental and sensually tangible exhibitions and art mediation projects, the Kunsthalle has become a place for discourse and of conviviality that aims to transcend social boundaries. With that, please, we are ready for you. Please show love, acceptance. Let's give a round. Uh -huh. Before Anna and Juliana start, I want to uh, acknowledge one. Uh, Professor Edwin Bojava joined us yesterday. Artists and the health department at the Department of Sports here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, again, sorry. yes, sorry. So I don't take this? No, you talk. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, again, thank you for, for having us. It's, um, yeah, it's a pleasure and uh, we're really, really excited uh, to see where everything came about that we have worked on for the last two years. And we thought just because now it's like, we, are, we have a biography together for, uh, for a long time now. We worked together for eight years, uh, even before the Kunsthalle, but we have very different backgrounds and we wanted to share that with you because it obviously also informs our practice. So um, my name is Anna Jiele and uh, I studied uh, communication and media science uh, with a major in political science. And I also have a master's degree in curatorial studies. And uh, behind me is my colleague, Juliane Schickedanz. Yeah, and hello from me as well. I'm Juliane Schickedanz and I studied uh, art mediation uh, in the arts at the art school uh, in Germany at the Bukibichenstein uh, as um, yeah, a um, mainly um, set or like how to say formed in the art types uh, uh, with an uh, interest in art and crafts so that's why uh, like I'm coming more from a, a sideways to curatorial practice through art mediation and also through industrial design which I also uh, studied so um, coming from painting, installations, industrial design, art mediation. So all of our interests somehow um, coming together to build up this institution since, well, I have a feedback. Um, uh, since uh, 2020. So we also started in the COVID time, uh, which made it really hard for us um, to um, open the institution as we wanted, but somehow um, the year now we are in was really important because we had the idea, the feeling that especially what we're showing you now um, also is making make a click for the people how we actually think and want to have like a participative uh, institution for the people in Osnabrück. Yeah, and I said we, we, we started to work together eight years ago as freelance curators for different uh, institutions or self-organized spaces. And I think what our practice was most informed by was uh, working in Leipzig, so East Germany, former uh, GDR, in a, a collectively run uh, Kunstverein. It's uh, quite a special model. It's uh, basic democratically organized with a collective that is ever-changing. So who is there makes program it's everything is um, discussed collectively and I think um, this idea of, of many voices many perspectives uh, many different practices is something that we wanted to to take with us and bring actually to a communal like institution and then we started uh, applying and Osnabrück was happy to have us 
<laughs> we'll see. Um, so we are now giving you a short introduction to the institution. What is the institution? Crazy was showing it shortly yesterday already. And after that, we are talking about the three shows we have and had on view this year, which uh, we think was a yeah, delightful combination of different contexts and perspectives and um, was the one we going to have in our 30th anniversary of the Kunsthalle. And after that, because uh, Casey talk and Bettina talked already about the Westphalian Treaty and the other ones will talk about it more and are more experts, but we give you a short interview how maybe the other cultural events are surrounding Ibrahim's work for this year. And then I think because our presentation is uh, not an hour, it's uh, I think just to give you a short glimpse of like 20 minutes and then we would actually like to like that's how we understood that we talk with you, Ibrahim, um, about uh, what happened and maybe in the context of the Kunsthalle, in the context of the city of, of Osnabrück, um, just to, we wanted just to give you a short, yeah, I think like a background of like on which basis all of this um, happened. But we also give our best with 20 minutes because two directors also talk double. <laughs> so uh, this is the Kunsthalle. Uh, it's situated in a domestic with a church from 12-8 and so it's a Catholic, it's a Catholic church uh, for the Dominican monks that used to be in practice until um, the beginning of the 19th century after the Napoleon Wars, a lot of uh, Catholic uh, domestic had uh, to let down. And after that, it was used for a hospital, a apartment house. Um, and in the images after the Second World War, you could also see they put in three levels um, in the church. So people were living there. Uh, also used for the military as a storage or for cultural events in the city in general. And now, since 30 years, it's a Kunsthalle, it's a communal institution of the city, so it's like a Kunsthalle to explain it uh, uh, to people who might not know, who are not from Germany, it's more like a system between a museum and an art as association. It's like saying, like a system maybe from the 60s, 70s, that the city says, uh, they want to have an own hall for contemporary art to uh, support local artists and um, contemporary art in general. So this is one of our main exhibition spaces. So we exhibit in this church, you will see in a bit. And as Crazy just showed, around the corners of our entrance, and somehow this picture is really funny, so the buses don't look like this anymore. It looks like a photo from the 60s somehow. It's more like for tourist reasons. <laughs> and by accident, we took it because it's a really new photo for, um, from the opening this year. So in COVID times, we did a 3D model of the uh, Kunsthal as well, where we arrived so that also international artists could work, even if they couldn't travel to Osnabrück in Germany they could work on the exhibitions. So like uh, on the right, you see the church. This is a, a main building, it's like uh, 350 square meters. You have the entrance. Yeah, maybe, thank you, Anna. Uh, there's our entrance. And uh, this is, uh, used to be the uh, domestic in the, uh, in the middle, you have the yard, you have like a atrium uh, yard um, and it's surrounded uh, by the hallway where the monks used to pray. And um, yeah, besides that, our offices are connected, so all of this is actually like a, a fluent, um, open exhibition space. And in the back, as we call it, the new building, it's from the Western Germany uh, 70s. Um, like, I think in medieval times, it used to be an open space. So in the yard, they also used to have like a, um, a fountain uh, to feed the, the horses and used to be open, but they closed it in the 70s. And it was never like reconstructed for museum reasons. It's more like to have it as an office. So.
Yeah, this is us. Uh, this is our team. So you see uh, we have 15 employees. Um, they are all employed by the city of Osnabrück. Also the visitor service is employed. And then we have around 20 freelancers who work in art mediation, graphic design, etc. I think what is uh, quite special about our team is um, we're very different in, um, in demographics. So uh, Julian and I are nearly the youngest. And uh, the team we have, as we do mainly new productions, that means that we have the Kunsthalle is closed sometimes for like four to six weeks. And uh, as people are employed, we obviously they work and uh, so they are all part of the installation process so they meet the artists they are part of every step of um, of the process and everyone still does what they what they physically uh, still can do but um, everyone over the years um, also because some of them are obviously artists um, have very special skills to to contribute um, and share with the invited artists um, so Julian and I were not just the directors of the Kunsthalle, but we are actually also the curators. So there is uh, no other. Uh, so we are actually curating all the shows. Uh, this is like an exception uh, now that we were lucky to uh, to invite uh, Kvesi and and Bettina for for this show. But so it means that we actually curate everything in communication and collaboration with the team. We have a curator for um, art in public space and a curator for um, public programming, outreach, education. So, and I think in the beginning, we said we come from this very, very collective basis democratic uh, context, uh, freelance work, and we come into a communal institution very bureaucratic, very very hierarchical. And I think after four years now, we're at this point where we can really share this um, our common voice that is already a small collective, and we can share it um, also with more voices of the team and find uh, processes where we uh, meet every uh, second week and can actually develop the program uh, together. Yeah, this uh, this is me or you? You. <laughs> ah, yeah. But just to give you to have a, like a, a connection, make a bridge between yesterday and today. This is uh, this is the opening also of all the three shows and also of Ibrahim's shows. Just to like uh, bring the thoughts back why we are actually here to that you more can experience how we open. Uh, the show. So this is in in the central yard of the uh, exhibition space, but we are also standing in the mid of one of the exhibitions we will uh, just show you. And just as a, a reminder, it was a yeah really nice uh, opening. And what was also really nice was really communal because over uh, this maybe didn't get through yesterday over 100. Uh, people from Osnabrück were participating in Ibrahim's work and were sewing um, on site together with us and um, uh, a lot of people came to really celebrate the opening. I have a little bit feedback on my uh, microphone, maybe somebody can rearrange. So, yeah, but just to have an idea how it looks like there for you and one of the yeah maybe if, so there's we so I think we are we are in this year of uh, celebrating mm -hmm. 30 years of uh, Kunsthalle Osnabrück and 375 years of Westphalian peace which is like a huge um, city festival and uh, we were thinking about what is important for us if we go into into these in these anniversaries what can actually mirror our approach that we have been, that the thoughts that have been guiding our work for the last uh, four years for the Kunsthalle. And so I think we distilled three aspects that were important and I think you will find them in, in, all, the, in all the shows in Ibrahim's work, but um, also in the two others that we will uh, shortly introduce. Some maybe cater to more of them, some is one aspect. 
So I think one aspect for us that was very important that if we celebrate an, an anniversary of 30 years of a communal institution, which always has to ask the question, who is the institution really working for? Who does it cater to? Uh, who do we not addressing yet? It was uh, very important that there is a lot of um, acknowledgement and also invitation to local initiatives, artists um, and programs. The second one was that if you celebrate an anniversary, it's always um, tends to tends to come to celebrating and mystifying the path, uh, the past, and um, so we decided that we want to uh, do a project that explicitly looks into into the future or very current socio-political questions. And also, and I think the third aspect that we wanted to emphasize is that it is always important for us um, to bring international perspectives to Osnabrück and especially also ones that are outside of a uh, Eurocentric perspective. So, this, I have to change to the video because it was a bit buggy in the PowerPoint presentation. Um, so the uh, second uh, um, uh -huh. so the second uh, big um, solo exhibition next to Ibrahim Mahama was oh, it is, is a show by Ara Batol. Uh, your package is up right. In English it means your package is ready to pick up, as you know it from the local post. Uh, he's a, a Berlin-based artist and was one of the first artists in Germany who was interested in the relation of uh, the internet, software, hardware and how it actually affects our rela uh, human relations. And since a long time, he's doing uh, like also works about this DIY scene, which is also connected to this um, robotic new area. And as he's really interested in hardware, he uh, he's spending a lot of time on uh, e-waste areas, and he always wanted to do an exhibition with that. And now he transformed the church uh, into an e-waste area. So we borrowed a lot of e-waste from a local company and we created a parkour of these uh, gitter boxes of e-waste uh, in the church and have now different areas you can uh, experience out of these boxes. We also produced, like here you see it, it's like a classroom uh, he constructed in the middle of the church and for our art mediation program, but Anna will later talk about, we have a, a huge public program uh, with artists and local in initiatives in the city uh, who just can yeah, spend time there, have workshops, talk about the work. We also have a free entrance now as the anniversary is going on and so people just can come here. We see like the framing of the exhibitions are like these fire emoji QR codes. I, I call them the fire from hell as we are in church. And behind every QR code is an information you can read out as the space is so big. And you have like yeah, information like the Keeling curve, which is informing you about the CO2, um, how to say CO2 um, until like percentage percentage since the 50s. Oh, I have to, I'm talking longer than the video. Maybe it just go on again. <laughs> and um, <coughs> and since the 50s, but they're also like artistic hacks. One uh, of the QR codes you scan in, and you can send an uh, email directly to our uh, counselor uh, because he's born in Osnabrück actually, then he should uh, visit the uh, show again because obviously it's about uh, the responsibility as a society in um, producing more and more uh, waste and how we could be more sustainable in the climate 
crisis and this is a QR code in the back or it's, uh, it's doing a hack in your calendar to be reminded and there you saw the DHL post boxes, they are also um, integrated in the show and right now you um, can pick up or send out your packages in the exhibition. So if you book bought something online, you're getting like sheet of paper in your post box and it says your package is ready to pick up at the exhibition of Aram Bartol in the Kunsthalle Osnabrück. So people also not used to go to exhibitions maybe now have to enter the museum. So it's also a little hack um, to be more open, but also in the idea that you maybe this is what you just bought, you turn around and see all the e-ways and you may be reminded that, that uh, if you actually need to use it. And in the ceiling, you maybe saw already this huge chandeliers because we just, we have no artificial light in the church. We are just working with the natural light. So all the artists have to find a solution um, to integrate the light situation in the installation. So we are just doing mostly installation art in the church or this is what we are more also specific in. And these chandeliers are also produced out of um, broken LED screens. So we took out the, um, the front and you just see the LEDs and we hacked them with a little computer which are always sending a signal to the uh, screen so they are uh, still on even they are broken. And it's really nice. We just have the documentation now by day, but it's also really nice because, uh, nice because it's really bright and the church is shining from outside. So, um, which is maybe not as important, but we do all the productions on site because these chandeliers are so huge you don't get them through the door. So we have, um, we have to prepare everything on site and the countryside we're working together with different craftsmen and they are like planning it for us and then um, bring it all together in the church. Want to add something to the exhibition? No. Okay, <laughs> then I go back to the PowerPoint. Yeah, and um, so out, I think out of this yeah, DIY internet uh, culture, support culture, um, Aram's work, um, he became famous actually with a work that is a USB stick with information on it that he um, put into a wall permanently so people could share the information with like docking their laptop on it and um, he spread the information of how to do it worldwide so people all around the world now uh, put USB sticks in walls in the urban space and this is what he, he became uh, known for and so I think his work is a lot about sharing uh, knowledge, uh, learning from each other. So a huge part of this exhibition, you saw it in the, um, uh, also in the installation, is a, a classroom. But um, so there is different, there's a huge public programming that is uh, done by um, a curator from um, Joscha Heinrichs from our art mediation team. And uh, it involves, for example, we did uh, a bicycle excursion uh, to the electronic waste company that we borrowed the waste from because actually, I mean, what we have in the church now is like really valuable. Um, so some of the things is like with gold and um, obviously also speaks about like a whole economy that is uh, behind uh, behind this waste and um, um, yeah, ways of exploitation and so on. So it talks about um, many many different uh, many different things so we did an, uh, a funny uh, bike e excursion also to another museum the industrial museum has a show um, we uh, have um, workshops uh, with artists this is an artist uh, uh, Dasha Hewitt she works with um, old uh, electronic e equipment uh, this this was about uh, old TVs permitting Electrostatic, um, electrostatics, and how that um, yeah can can trans be transformed into sculpture and music. 
Um, so how to actually make use of this, uh, this um, material that we think is, is just for waste. Um, and then we have, uh, and this, this is actually uh, quite beautiful because it's something that I have uh, heard of. There is uh, for decades um, so-called repair cafes uh, and in um, Osnabrück, so it's mainly old men that uh, still know how to uh, repair um, old electronical equipment. And I think they have been overlooked and, and neglected also for a very long time. And now actually with also inflation in Germany, uh, people having less money, um, it, people go back to repairing things or get like more conscious. And all, now these initiatives actually are thriving. And in Osnabrück, there is more than five of these initiatives and they gather now um, in the Kunsthalle every second week and people can come uh, and they repair things with them together. And it's a very cozy atmosphere. I mean, people bring also funny stuff to repair, but I mean, you know, there's coffee and cake and um, it becomes something, there's like really high demand. So we do like then in three hours, uh, 20 things get uh, up to 20 things actually uh, get repaired. Should I go? Oh yeah. I forgot. Uh, Maybe I'm, this is. Uh, should I go on? Yeah, you should yeah. go on. I mean, um, since we are there, what obviously our interest was also to open up the museum to a much more diverse um, audience than it was before, and <coughs> and from different backgrounds and uh, different ages, and maybe the example Anna was just showing us something. Um, and like after we did the, um, the program about accessibility, just quickly just mentioned, we don't have much time to talk about now, but it's also about an intergenerational um, openness. The experience could be really interesting for Osnabrück as well as there's maybe somehow a gap of communication between younger and older people as well. And it's maybe a huge difficulty also in our society right now. And somehow it became, I mean, all the programs these are so huge and somehow they have a life on its own, which is really beautiful how they embrace it. And also the third project we have on view right now is somehow dealing with this. It's called Bist bereit in uh, German. It's called Are You Ready? So this is somehow our anniversary uh, exhibition. And with our team who is creating and organizing all the shows, we decided what we actually want to do as our anniversary show. And the team decided that we want to open up the house uh, for other associations and artists and initiatives in the city. So we invited uh, 30 artists and initiatives to do um, like uh, pop-up shows, events, like 30 years, 30 events, 30 uh, people and who got like a carte blanche from us to do what they want in the museum and we can't say anything as long as uh, as long as political right with us and we saw yeah really i will show you some but really beautiful events happened at the end and all our invitations um, were accepted and yeah open up the museum in new in a really beautiful way and uh, besides that we invited a leipzig-based artist jan hillebrand uh, who did like a framing, an architectural framing. This is what you're seeing right now for all the events, uh, which is mobile for all the participants. And usage which has an like organic character as, as an uh, fluent and mobile and open uh, practice. Uh, like uh, Diana also um, built these curtains. They are um, like painted, can I say painted or colored with wax and spirulina bacteria, which are like a light sensitive. So they are changing over time. And also the um, like the furniture you, you will see on the other pictures, they have like very curvy um, uh, character. They are also painted uh, with cyanotopie, which is uh, like a, a photosensitive uh, practice 
this also is working with bacteria which are also light sensitive so we have a really bright exhibition space so as the um, participants are moving the furniture, the character of all um, the framing is changing somehow. Yeah, and, uh, and the, so the material is uh, the material is a lot about the process and the visualization of time. So it's like the, the participants um, coming, going, uh, leaving traces, and uh, you also. And I think what is important, we like you said, Juliana, that we decided in a in a process together who to invite, and um, I think one decision that we that we took that was is most important to us who we invited is that um, especially like I said before we have a, a team where obviously people work for us uh, to make money but they are artists and uh, they rarely have the chance to show in the Kunsthalle they are supportive of the institution they're supportive of other artists so we invited them uh, individually to actually um, show their work and um, but we also have invited, um, for example, Exile V, who are um, who, who are um, investigating situations of. Um, migration in Osnabrück being um, doing a very activist program and education so it's very broad between exhibitions concerts performances um, and people bring us so everything that that comes is is uh, also uh, a surprise for us in in the end yeah and for us going through the uh, photos and we are showing we also also integrated in the architecture are the massage chairs we have since two years and was really funny also with always when Ibrahim came to Osnabrück he said where are the massage chairs uh, because it became a huge a hit for the visitors they can use them for free and uh, to so it's really our uh, aim to have a to practice a museum which is more as a, a as a place you want to spend time in so you come back and back it's more like a communal space uh, so yeah, I mean, just uh, just very very briefly show you a variety of events that happened over the last month. I mean, I always feel like we had so many because some out of them are like we actually feel like we have an opening every week uh, because people also celebrate uh, these invitations. And this, for example, uh, was um, an invitation to a museum worker at another museum, uh, Laura Igelbring, together with Dua Zeitung, and they um, invited uh, Syrian um, women that live in Osnabrück and uh, they cooked for a whole day and just invited visitors uh, to eat with them. Um, uh, learn about the food um, and uh, get in a very informal exchange. And this is the day after the opening. There was the uh, event of uh, the local art association, Hase uh, 29, and they invited a local artist who decided to have an exhibition with a, a techno rave. And as we weren't allowed to say anything, we uh, just waited until the police is coming. So, but it was really nice uh, to have this rave situation in the yard. Um, also to see that really different people are coming to this really different events and some of them are also coming back to things they didn't expect that they're interested in. Uh, this is a tiny house that is uh, behind the Kunsthaus, so behind uh, the newly built uh, glass and Andreas Zelle is one of our, yeah, he's part of our installation team external and he always takes material, materials when we deinstall. Um, he has um, a huge storage space and he takes the material and he actually builds tiny houses from it, uh, from our museum, but also from two other museums uh, in the city. And one of these tiny houses was for three months behind uh, the Kunsthalle and you could actually uh, live in it uh, and uh, book a night there and uh, sleep in or uh, next to next to the museum and this is just another example how so maybe the furniture works we had a, like a screening event also like a simple event by the european media art festival which is also situated in uh, osnabrück and see like the to have this 
talk about the slight situations um, which are pinkish, so we also have different situations to make it somehow cozy. And it was really funny because the lights are similar to the lights you were showing yesterday in your slide presentation about the Mercure oh, uh, hotels. Right. It's funny, the yeah, exactly. same we just recognized yesterday. Yeah. Funny to find it out here. Uh, there was also choirs uh, that because um, the church, um, so our church is um, not functioning as a sacred space anymore, just a sacred space for art. Um, so, but the instrument that was in there, the orgy, um, is in another church uh, close by. They still use it. And so we invited the choir that is uh, singing there and who with our instrument uh, we invited uh, them to bring songs back uh, to uh, for our anniversary and this is the last example for now this is Kaikitichi it's a, a contemporary chef and artist from uh, Berlin and he was invited by our board who also was showing an event and he did like a cooking event um, in all exhibition spaces and here it's a dessert and he's uh, serving frozen tongues uh, on the uh, furniture of uh, Diana. And maybe to build the next bridge uh, to maybe Gabriel's uh, lecture for tomorrow. Oh, I see that picture, I didn't see. But uh, anyway, it's more like, so you saw now the shows we are having in the house, but it's also how to talk la uh, later and maybe tomorrow, how uh, Ibrahim's work somehow embedded in our uh, shows, but also in the anniversary idea of the city of Osnabrück. So it was not just our 30th anniversary uh, this year, it's also the anniversary of the Westphalian Treaty for the 375th time. So it's uh, signed in 1648, and now it's this uh, anniversary. And this picture I'm, I just took on from Google <laughs> for the presentation in the hotel. It's showing uh, Patricia Bersinger. She is head of the cultural department of the city of Osnabrück, and the other one is um, Wolfgang Beckermann. He is the uh, attaché, cultural attaché. Cultural attaché um, uh, of the city of Osnabrück. So they, like as a PR conference, they're announcing the program. And it's more like a cultural anniversary of this event or anniversary itself. And there were over 200 events over the last, I don't know, seven months somehow and uh, so all of all initiatives were uh, involved in this idea of a peace city somehow this is also just to give you an idea but it's to um, just to have one event this also happened this year in Osnabrück but it's also happening every year uh, this is the celebrating also of the um, a signing of the Westphalian Treaty in Osnabrück with all the children who are in the fourth grade in Osnabrück right now. It's called Steckenpferd Reiten. So a Steckenpferd, I also got to know when I moved there, I didn't know before, it's this horse on a stick, like on a horse on a stick, it's called Steckenpferd. And it's like a symbol for the signing of the Westphalian Treaty because they were passed over from city to city by horses. So they're still using this as a symbol for peace. And all the children in the fourth grade are like building their own Steckenpferd, their own horse on a stick. And with this horse, they're riding in a procession uh, to the town hall of the city. Maybe, but I'm also interested, maybe it's also interesting for Gabriel because they are, but they are like in front are these historical figures in costumes um, like guiding them and in the middle is the sign of Osnabrück and the right like with this peace pigeon it's actually the door handle of the hall, city hall of Osnabrück as a symbol again 
I find it pretty good. And after that, the children, so they're all coming together. I mean, hundreds of uh, uh, so small, it's Osnabrück, it's not so small, so like hundreds of uh, children are coming all together and also have like a night event that's going for hours. And then they are riding, I have to say, they, they're riding with their horses up the stairs to the mayor of Osnabrück, and the mayor is passing them a sweet pretzel, like, um, and the pretzel, I don't know what, where the, I'm not coming from a region where they eat pretzels actually, why it's a pretzel actually, you also don't know. It's more, also, that they, it's just like, like, um, um, how to say, um, uh, Maybe it's pretzel in English. Yeah. It's pretzel, I, I know, no, but the whole um, procession, it's more like a ritual, to, in a ritual that they also stand up for the idea of peace in the city of Osnabrück somehow, and then they uh, pass over. So this will ha is happening every year uh, in the city. Yeah, and I think was what was important to us or interesting to us is like to combine two different things so this to say we are the city of peace uh, in Osnabrück so as a as a brand as a self-understanding as an identity um, we wanted to talk about whose peace we are talking about and what, what that actually means um, because so we wanted to invite a position that we thought an artistic position we we thought would be interesting to discuss this uh, with but also the Westphalian treaty as also this identity marker so deeply rooted in in the rituals of of the city of of Osnabrück and its achievement of yeah, diplomacy, peace, um, peace in Europe between the religion, all of this. But we had the feeling we would like to shed an outside and um, outside perspective on um, on this history. And uh, I think a third aspect that was interesting to us is obviously why we then invited uh, Ibrahim as well with the Anja Lückenkamp, uh, curator for art in public space at, the, uh, at this time, um, was that we obviously knew also about the uh, uh, linen history of Osnabrück, of Osnabrück and um, it's, it's a direct involvement in colonial endeavors and um, we had a feeling that we, when we talk about peace, we also have to talk about this history and its contingencies in in the present, and this is how we how we started actually from from this very concrete um, idea of the anniversary um, to to start about a, a dialogue about yeah questions that are maybe is maybe not addressed as much uh, in the other program. So it, um, I think this would be the, the point where we could also talk about this or uh, if you have any questions or Ibrahim wants to add something. Okay. Thank you very much. You want mic? Does that mic work? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Anna, Julian. So we have some time um, to discuss but this at least clears the the way and it gives us a better understanding of you know, the context for Ibrahim's um, exhibition project but I want to start with this because I want to say that now that we're on the peace treaty uh, you, you the 307 no 350th anniversary of the Westphalia Peace Treaty, which was, I think, in 1998 or so. You had the, the celebration in Osnabrück and Munster. You had, like, heads of states and, you know, kings and queens all over Europe coming in. That's really the background. So for us, um, when I found this out, it wasn't so surprising to see the, 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 the uproar. Because really, this is like an important, you know, moment for the for the city, 
and uh, yeah, for Europe in general as well, to be able to, uh, you know, just, you could say it's a sanitized history, but it's also, you know, part of the, or has become a part of the heritage in some way. So to be, to invite or to want this uh, counter perspective or counter argument should have taken some, some guts, no? Because uh, you, would, you would have been going against the grain. You would, have, you would have had to wrestle with the city authorities, also with public perspectives, expectations, and so on, no? Yes, and yes and no, because we are not the only ones um, doing this work. I think it has to be acknowledged. There is um, Dr. Thorsten Hees, uh, we will hear tomorrow, I guess, um, who is doing research into um, Osnabrück's involvement uh, in colonialism and uh, traces of that in the city for, I don't think, 20 years is enough. Um, so there is... Um, very many people who work in the institutions of Osnabrück who are interested in that perspective. So I think it's not, they, of course, uh, there's always a fear of um, damaging a, a brand or something that like people are so sure about and brings them together and make criticizing a, a ritual and what it actually means. and. Um, and, at, and at the same time, I can say that we also had the feeling there was um, also an openness to embrace another perspective. And I think it's also what, I mean, as a contemporary art institution, it's also what we, what we do. I mean, we want to we wanna ask questions and we want to dig deeper and um, we are ready for the discussions that, that come up with it. It somehow comes with the job, I guess. Maxwell? Gabriel, you have a word to share. <laughs> no, I mean, just, I would, I would even say so that it's even strength, and, uh, it's, it's even a strength, uh, a strength for this kind of self understanding of, but also of the marketing tool of uh, City of Peace or so. And, I mean, it's not that if you are going against the grain, it immediately can weaken mm. you. Mm. I, is I understand you, and I also, what was my feeling when I was visiting Osnabrück and also, this kind of like on the political scene, they were. Yeah, I would say it's not so. I would a little bit counter argue your your point of you know, that it's kind of like a very problematic position. Yes. When you asked your question yesterday, you said something which I put on a slide that I'm going to show tomorrow. You said, "What if?" your peace deserves my peace, right? Now there's a moment that is being celebrated in, in Osnabrück, in Germany. And Germany is one of the European countries that has had a more, um, if I can say, difficult relationship with its colonial past. Um, maybe the British and the French are pretending that they are, but anyway, they are more in your face with, okay, we're doing this. Germany is still struggling to come to terms with this colonial past. So, I mean, I think that this is very radical. I don't know, maybe people didn't realize what you were doing because, um, you know, there's a piece, that's being, a piece that's being celebrated, but it's reminding me, as the young people will say, it's, a, it's, it's triggering me about what that meant in my context, right? So you are celebrating some peace, but that peace, also has hinged to it some troubles in my part of the world. And I mean, recently, who, the councillor or somebody went to um, Namibia, right? And there was, was there an apology and an acknowledgement, whatever. So it's, 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 it's late in the day, but it's never too late. So one, I think either people didn't realize how radical it was, and I want to know, you know, whether behind this, I'd be interested to know whether behind the scenes there was any, guys, you can't do this, and you have to be careful, and people are going to start asking for reparations and compensations and be quiet, or um, have some conversations opened around this, because, okay, we're doing arts, we're doing an art exhibition, and part of the whole, new decolonial conversation, because these conversations have been going back for as long as there's been slavery, right? 
part of the new conversations are about what you people have done to our artifacts, which are not just art that we hang on the wall, but these are part of, I mean, like the Benin bronzes, the people have been shouting that these are spiritual aspects, uh, artifacts for us. They are not things that we just hang on the wall. And whether there's a museum for them to go back to or not is none of your business. They are always, we want them back. So I think these are very complex and complicated conversations. I don't know how much of that goes on in uh, Osnabrück. And, um, you know, I'd be, I'd be, and I'd be curious to know how that is impacting subsequent you know, conversations and what we can do and what are we returning and to whom and, you know, all of that all is, I mean, is that, is that asking you guys too much? Maybe I'm asking you to answer questions that are not, you know, you are not the ones to answer, but certainly I think it's something for us to talk about because going forward and, and maybe if I have time, I'll speak to a little bit more of that tomorrow. There's also a very, very predatory, I was talking with them, um, where's the young lady, yesterday, a very predatory culture out there, the way Nigerian, um, what is it, Afrobeats is on the map, Ghanaian art is on the map, like everybody wants a piece of the action, what does it mean for the artists, right? Maybe I'm putting too many of the things that trouble me <laughs> on the table, but... I think that if we have the opportunity, these are things to talk about for going forward, our tomorrows and so on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I, yeah, I think I, I would really love to, to get into the dis discussions over the next days. I mean, I can say it's not like this, there's many discussions that derived from this art piece um, and they were very heaty and especially in Osnabrück, because I think, like internationally or nationally, um, Iska Ibrahim is a renowned artist, very respected, and in, in Osnabrück, this it was discussed, and I think this showed that Osnabrück didn't talk about uh, its colonial past enough, uh, of course, and uh, this is why we're still having this discussion till today. I mean, the piece is not there. We're still having the discussions. And I think that's what we as an um, art institutions, but also as, I mean, we are part of the city of Osnabrück. We are the city of Osnabrück, of this um, bureaucratic apparatus. This is what we can do, is that we can facilitate this discussion and be sure that it is continued and um, through, through different channels, but also that we, through the piece of Ibrahim, make connection to a um, community of Osnabrück that thought that the Kunsthalle was not for them and they now like taking spice and like, so we can actually address these questions with a much more diverse audience also. And I think this is, so this is the responsibility. This is the responsibility uh, we feel. But I think it's also from the big boys. no, not for this. I mean, in different like <laughs> no. Um, but it's also because I mean the project was validated through a, a very um, through funding of the uh, um, cultural. Um, uh, how do you say, Bundeskulturstiftung. So, you know, it's also like a, a validation of, of a work uh, that also obviously helps to politically push through. And the city actually decided, and I think that is what we have to give the city of Osnabrück, that they decided to go in with extra money uh, from this anniversary. Um, there's an anniversary, um, how do we say, uh, um, like financing the anniversary, like money that was on top of it. And um, the, the work of the, the Kunsthalle got a, a quite big share of that to realize uh, the, the work of Ibrahim. And um, I think it's in many political, uh, like, yeah, on, on, on bureaucratic level, but also on political level, it's uh, that you always need some people who um, uh, push the agenda. And I think we were lucky to get supported in that way. It could have also been the other way around, but it was, it was like this.
Yeah, I would also say the, the, the city of Osnabrück was always standing behind the artwork uh, and the ideas of the artwork. It's more like, obviously, I mean, there was such a huge installation that we had difficulties in the process, but it was more like a technical question and not a uh, not content wise. So, but the and this is the maybe the power of art as well that the installation and the uh, the visual impact was so huge that it actually was breaking, breaking up or opened, uh, uh, opened that the idea of this peace brand isn't so slick and round as they wish or everybody wishes it is. So it was more like the the different voices and. Um, articles we had um, the, then the beginning of the installation which were more how to say I don't know the, the German word it's um, it's more I forgot it's more it's this um, wie sagt man, um, I'm coming back. I'm, okay. I lost. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it uh, also, I think what happened is that we have communicated about this piece, what it's going to be, what it will be about, what the research is continuously to give people the feeling they're also involved in the process. But then it was there and it, it was not just big, but it's like powerful, it's like central and like suddenly it hit people. And this is like, I think where we were surprised that now we're having these discussions, not before, but it's because it's, it's, it's the power of, of, of this art piece and, and of what it also meant in this environment that was already something, I mean, we said yesterday that we didn't know that was connected to so much disappointment of people and now we expect from them even more to reflect themselves and their history and uh, what what uh, what results that has in the present and and now though you know they're already dealing with this uh, vacant urban space uh, that nobody is doing something for them anymore so I think uh, like many different like local and global questions like collided in, in this, this art piece and uh, I think yeah I hope we can facilitate this and it's um, exactly what a city like Osnabrück also needed and that's I think I'd be so grateful that uh, Ibrahim decided to to delve into this um, in a we are in also for in the art institution world we are obviously in the periphery and uh, but all these uh, but, but there it's it's needed and and this is why we are so so grateful thank you I just um, I guess the there are two things uh, one is the gallery of Kalko. I don't know if you spoke about that, the decisions around using it. One, the history of the building. Two, the form, because Bettina was also very interested in the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the design, the architectural design of the building in terms of the facade and how that has changed over time. And also what the building represented in relation to like the history of Germany in terms of like these big shopping malls, things like that. Um, yeah, and secondly also, because uh, when the invitation came, I had to come to Osnabrück and I um, did, um, I, I think, uh, there was the name of the guy who has the history. Thorsten. Yeah, <laughs> so we went around and then we talked about the history of Lenin production, went to the museum and saw all the different samples and all that. And that was interesting. So for us, this in the case of uh, uh, Osnabrück, it was the first time that we were using the blue fabric. Uh, for the work and uh, that fabric that we use in, uh, in, 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 in here that is known to the northern region of Ghana is for, it's called uh, Pankopu and the Pankopu uh, means guinea fowl it's like the feather of the guinea fowl so basically it's, uh, the design is after like uh, guinea fowl so like it's supposed to symbolize the, uh, the guinea fowl which has its own proverbial meanings here and uh, it's also connected to the history of let's say 
the, our kingdom in relation to where the king lives and how the fabric was developed historically and all that. And in our history also, we had, of course, in uh, 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 Western uh, trans uh, uh, Togoland, uh, what's the, what's the, 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 the transport, uh, yeah, through the referendum, because Ghana, Epal Yendi and others, uh, a few decades ago could have been, <coughs> been part of Togo or would have been a, an independent state or something like that. And that was also because of like German occupation and all that. So when you go there, we have this uh, German cemetery and also like other historical monuments. So for me, the fabric was also a way to reconnect to like this kind of colonial history, things like that. So combining that together with Galeria Calfo, I thought it was quite interesting. But of course, uh, when the exhibition happened, um, of course, there were a lot of, there was some resistance. I remember during the press opening, or even before, there was a journalist that had written this long article about uh, the fact that the city had spent so, so and so X amount of money to commission an artist from Africa to produce this fabric. And then he was even calculating like how much it costs to even ship, uh, just put it on a plane and bring it all the way. And I was like, this is so ridiculous. Like, And so during the opening, I remember saying that I, I can like, uh, one, I don't even want to go into the conversation of if I was, uh, if it was not a Western, like, uh, like a Western-based artist doing this kind of project, if you would have asked that, say, do same sets of questions. But secondly, you are dealing with uh, objects which are related to, let's say, setting global trade and commodity. And you normally don't, when all the, like Gamera Capo, for instance, and those shops, those big shopping malls, where most of the clothes come from. They might be coming from India, Bangladesh and other places, but no one is talking about when you go to Bangladesh, even like those places, sometimes even a minute before you land, you can barely see anything because the entire city is polluted. I always said to someone that I'd never, even coming from Africa, apart from going to Congo and a few other places, I'd never seen poverty in a character, like in the form of a human being before, than going to those parts of the world. And Europe does very little in order to be able to, for instance, even now, till now. So for us, the work was a way also to open up those forms and discussions, even now. Of course, the, for us, the colonial and everything was important, but aesthetically, through the material and everything, because as you can see in a red uh, SCCA, with the material and yesterday Mr. Jesse also showed the complexity of for instance the loom and even putting it together so for us the labor context in relation to the aesthetics was something that was very important <coughs> to reflect it upon within the work yeah so we are uh, as artists curators and all that we're also asking ourselves th those questions through that and of course there are people in the city who would never who would not agree because there are people uh, one of the big concerns was that of course now because of uh, the internet and amazon and others people are saying oh but the shopping malls are dying or, yeah because a lot of people don't go to do us shopping much shopping us except for people like us who want to see the thing before we buy it <laughs> so uh, it was interesting how the comments online and uh, people have concerns so we need uh, a swimming pool public swimming pool we need a uh, yeah of course there is their concerns for us here in our part of the world we have other concerns i was telling someone the other day that even us at now here at Red Clay, we are in court with the Ghana Water Company because uh, we can't even get access to drinking water. And when you even pay them to connect the pipeline, they won't give you the water and they'll come and bail you on top of it. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes, as you were saying, like the, 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 their peace somehow created uh, disruptions elsewhere. So for art in general, people have different uh, ways of uh, coming to it. So in Europe and other places, there are many things you don't think about. Like you wake up, there's water, the water is flowing, there's the electricity, the electricity never goes off. But here, before you even start thinking about art, you have to for instance, even build a road <laughs> or... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you have to be able to solve certain communal problems. So, the, I, so those questions, I think, were some of the things that even curatorially, um, Bettina and then uh, Kwesi were also very much interested in at the core of, for instance, the aesthetics of the work and how through that, when there is a dialogue around the work and aesthetics and everything, we could begin to open up and unpack some of these things. So for me, I think it was, it was quite successful, honestly. Um, and uh, it somehow inspired me even as an artist to even go back to my practice in a different ways I have been doing. Yeah, part of it, I think, first to add, um, I think part of uh, why 
the mediation into the city also worked so well is because you have this uh, incredible patience, I must say. I mean, at this press conference, I was like, obviously because it's our job to then to protect artists and see how we, you know, that, that but Ibrahim like took the microphone and talked to this person. And I think um, that's something we, we, we don't expect. Um, but these things help to also always talk about there is this past. You have to acknowledge it. You have to learn from it. But what is the future? We have like the common future. How do we live together? What does peace mean in terms of equality? And uh, this means we have to think about labor conditions and it means we have to think about global trade. And these kind of things, I think, came with this kind of yeah sensitivity to of and your patience to read the audience where was actually where is actually a point of connection and uh, that a conversation can be started and I often thought it shouldn't be this way <laughs> it shouldn't be this way um, there should be an openness but when there wasn't it it was about you and 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 crazy and and Bettina but, but like yeah I, I had the feeling when you were in the room um, that, that also turned and then then we could have these discussions and work with it uh, later. And this man of this one newspaper, he will write forever about her. So it will like, you know, he will dedicate his time for, for a long time. Uh, <laughs> uh, this, so he, he might also learn. We'll see. Two minutes. Who give her? Question and you, and you can say no, you won't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I personally, as an academic who thrives on academic freedom, I am very troubled by the cancellations of all kinds of things because somebody just says, Don't kill people in Palestine. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if Ibrahim had made some comments somewhere, would you have been able to host this, or would you do you have? Because the lack of freedom is not the same everywhere. Some places have a bit more space to maneuver. Um, the, a, prize has, a prize has just been cancelled. Peter Vice Prize or something in Bochum has just been cancelled. Because I guess I haven't seen the full story because somebody must have said, you know, I don't know, whatever. Do you think you have the space to deal with that? And I know Germany is a very particular context when it comes to Israel and Palestine. Um, but do, do you think you would have the space? Would you, as I said, if you, you don't have to answer, if, 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 if you had an artist who you know, had said something, is likely to say something, would you have the freedom, do you think? I answer you diplomatically. Um, we, are, we have artistic freedom at the Kunsthalle Osnabrück, but we are also the city of Osnabrück. So if they would give guidelines, um, which we haven't received, um, we would have to either comply to them or go into discussion, negotiation, and see what happens. Um, but this is, this is how it goes. I mean, there's also a question, which is a question in connection to Ibrahim's work, but also some, something else, obviously. And I, I think, yeah, the situation in Germany, it's, uh, uh, it's different, or you're totally right. Uh, we have cases right now which are really difficult, and, but I still think it's more like, I mean, social media as well, also, um, transforming museum in somehow stages for opinions but I still have the feeling museums should be much more a safe space for discussing situations as well and we shouldn't get um, shouldn't get we shouldn't lose this opportunity opportunity to discuss um, situations um, globally this I, I'm thinking. 
Yeah, a, a space of different perspectives. I mean, that's what, what museums are about. So um, if we start canceling, like we're not going to have diverse uh, perspectives. So how can we, how can we, as you say, um, stay open for, for exchange and platform exchange? Um, this is what, what is our uh, self-understanding also within a German, uh, German context that is indeed uh, specific. Right. And at the same time, we're also uh, shrouded in the, in the bigger picture uh, of, of uh, the question of you know, artistic freedom in the context of art in Germany. Right. Since at least since last year, with regard to uh, Document 15, now you know, based on uh, geopolitical issues, Document 16. You see, so they are they are uh, these are questions of um, empire. Like we're dealing with the legacies of imperialism, which uh, through the political economic systems that you know were forced down the throat, really. Uh, Literally everywhere on the globe, we have, um, how do you say, yeah, we're all dealing with, you know, these very textured, um, complex issues. And the moment this came up, it, was, it always had to be a bigger conversation. It, it always had to go beyond Germany. And so Ibrahim's perspectives were really, you know, um, yeah, pushing towards that area. And, uh, you know, he, he's a fearless artist. If 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 it had come up, <laughs> maybe maybe you know. Yeah, but yeah, we but well, we would have still had to deal with it. But yeah, the tensions really are are there. They are latent. We can either come to terms with it or pretend as if they're not there. Uh, I wanted to say something before this uh, question comes up, and I think maybe it's also something we will discuss in the next two days. Um, so the Westphalian system, the peace treaty, it is, of course, there is this kind of like colonial legacy and the kind of like the more materialist, historic, historic <coughs> dimension also of the work, but there is also kind of like such a conceptual uh, dimension of what is sovereignty, what is actually the state, uh, what is kind of like uh, even, yeah, of course, the question of religious freedom, <coughs> so how the state is constituted. Um, and I think this is also the reason why I said at the beginning that, of course, a city like Osnabrück, who's marketing himself as a city of peace, no one thinks, I mean, from my perspective, also, I think in, in, in Osnabrück, is no one is, uh, is thinking, oh, we are here, we are leave, living in peaceful times and this is kind of like peace at its core but it is also like the city where this kind of conceptual framing of what is the Westphalian system maybe what then was kind of like structuring probably from the 19th century until until today um, a lot of understanding of what is sovereignty what is the state and what is diplomacy whatsoever whatsoever and so they marketing this uh, they are not I mean, there, there was a peace after uh, 1648, but then there was wars every, every year from there. So it's not that there was a peace treaty and then we, <laughs> we came into a peaceful uh, um, era of um, whatever. So I think this, this kind of conceptual moment is something which is very interesting. And I would uh, even say, for example, I, I was talking with Chrissy about it, when we were talking about um, kind of like the idea of a nation state after empire, and there's this wonderful book by Adam Getachev, uh, Ethiopian American professor, who's, for example, also bringing in what, what Kram and Kruma and this kind of like nation state making was in this concept of a fast failing system, right? And how like the United Nations is linked to it and so on and so on. So it's very. I think the conceptual dimension is, is something we will, I think, talk in the next two days also about. Any more? Yeah. Sorry. Thank you.
thanks for the presentation. I enjoyed following it. And while you presented, I think I couldn't help but hear a lot of we and they a lot. And I was just wondering whether um, you have like a targeted audience in your practices and what and who you mean to have these conversations with and how sure we are that we are not in the same loop like more than 100 years ago of um, either finger pointing got some time there the thing i noticed is that it's i mean contemporary art is increasingly becoming more and more a complex conversation either among the very elite group who understand this language and to be able to even translate it. But also sitting in the same space again, it's also as a result of another contemporary art intervention, which is touching just so much and so easy to interpret. And so I was just interested in that now. I can start. Um, so first we, um, I mean, it's many different layers. So we, like you say, uh, we're dealing with uh, the museum, the Kunsthalle as a museum, as a Western institution, which comes with a history. So this is the first, I think, the first um, moment to, um, to address and to, to crack. Then we started to work at this institution with, four years ago, which had a specific audience. Um, so, and I think what we, Juliana, when I say we, I mean Juliana and I and the team of the Kunsthalle are asking ourselves like constantly with the program, but also with structural change is like, who doesn't feel welcomed yet? Like, who do we not see in the space? Who doesn't think the space is for them. So, you know, it's like non-specific. It's a, it's a question of like, so we had, for example, then we have started with, um, we school our team uh, in, uh, together with us. Like we do all these courses and we have done um, um, courses about um, diversity, questions of uh, queerness, of anti-racism. So we learn together as a team uh, because we, don't know about many things or we come with topics that our team was before not concerned with. Um, but also we have, for example, dedicated a, a whole year of research to questions of accessibility. Um, we were shortly mentioning it. And uh, accessibility meant for us um, exclusions on many levels. So we were not just talking about ableism was one part, um, but also um, about ra uh, racism, ageism, um, etc. So we have done a project about that, but have always involved um, people locally or externally as advisors uh, to make um, this uh, project um, worthwhile, um, but also that they have a contingency in, in learning. And also we give up authorship, for example, wherever we um, uh, have the feeling it's not our expertise, it's not something we can learn, but we need um, another perspective. And then um, Twitch that. So I think um, this is not about a specific audience, it's just more like really evaluating who is our audience now and who is not and why is that and what can we do. And this is a continuous uh, a learning process that we um, yeah, dedicate uh, our, our time to, I guess. Yeah, I'm just sorry that it maybe didn't come through right um, um, by the presentation. We really understand the house as a learning institution, which is interested in structural sh changes, which are slow. This is also something we have to accept because, I mean, especially when you're working as a creator, uh, it's totally normal that you change the institutions after two, four, five years. and. Uh, this is really a problem if you want to make a change because most of people are just interested in 
their own existence and that's not wrong because they also have to live so uh, but we really want to uh, build up something uh, that could really crack open the, the house uh, for the Osnabrück people and maybe this is also something we really experience that makes a difference if you're um, like just to talk about Germany but it makes a difference if you're um, directing a house uh, with a team, uh, it's in Berlin or Hamburg or somewhere else or Munich or it's in Osnabrück because you have to think about this uh, mediating question much more than you might need to do in Berlin because there you find the audience for everything. You can live in the bubble forever and this is not possible in Osnabrück and it makes us uh, really um, valuable for us to also think our perspective and our practice is new and this is what we tried uh, with all the exhibition we are doing this year but we also take with us from the other years and for the next years for example we now decided together with the team that we w won't uh, go on with this annual themes, more work on two year themes uh, for example because it has to be much slower as you think you have to learn in the topic itself so for the next two years um, the topic will be uh, kinders kinder like children's children to have this intergenerational x course it will be about education pedagogy, um, self-learning, but also new family models uh, you have in contemporary times and uh, community building itself. And we will uh, give one exhibition space, a uh, bigger one in the back, we call it the new building. It's 200 square meters to the art mediation department because they don't have an own space yet. They just having the art mediation in the exhibitions and we will construct with a um, um, contemporary artist who is an art mediator and a sculpture herself. Uh, she will uh, build together with a team and people from Osnabrück a um, hybrid uh, art mediation space uh, for the team but also for the public. And we try to get funding for like our own uh, Kunsthalle board that maybe people um, give their own amount of money to like like a, it's like an ongoing system like we did it here but they have their own amount of money to do own projects in the Kunsthalle they just can think of uh, like as a um, um, correction we need all the time so okay. and I also want to add because you were talking about the Eiffel Tower and who's able to understand we are uh, but, uh, what we are doing uh, concerning language is that uh, um, everything that we publish, um, which is information. So what is the show about? What is this artist interested in? Um, so the, we are talking the floor plan, the a website, a newsletter, social media. It's all in a language that's called, um, so there is a, um, um, that's a real language. Uh, uh, it's called simple language. Uh, in German, this is uh, quite elaborate. Uh, people learn how to translate complex texts into simpler texts. So we exclusively publish in this kind of language, um, just not things that are author bound. Uh, so uh, really, um, like curatorial theoretical texts or um, a reader we publish uh, every every year. This is author bound, like, you know, artist bound. Um, obviously, we don't translate that. But uh, for the rest, everything is in simple language. And simple language means that 80% um, um, or even more of the population, German population, can understand it. Um, art speak is about 40, 45. 45. Um, and that means that, um, um, yeah, some vanity and like writing texts uh, has to we, we have to uh, take that down a notch because the texts are very descriptive, very clear. They use. Um, uh, uh, complicated words, but if there's complicated words, they are explained so that also the reader can learn. But it's not just for people who, for example, are um, um, who have trouble learning or something, but it's also for people whose uh, first language might not be German, uh, people who are learning. 
So um, it's actually uh, catering to a, a, a broader public. So this is something we have um, have established, and we we continue doing it um, to also make to don't mystify art in this way, um, but that it's something that can also sometimes be easily described what you see, and then you might also be brave enough to make your own thoughts about it. Bettina, you have something to say? Yeah, maybe uh, directly responding to what you were just saying about the simple language. Um, I have a bit more critical point to that because um, our text also had to undergo this transformation and um, I was not so happy with it, <laughs> as you know. So we had a lot of discussions about it and uh, we found a compromise in um, publishing like the English text in the in a more um, in a more complex version and have the German one in the simple language. But um, so my concern is actually why are you not opting for having both, like uh, you know having uh, both uh, parallelly, and um, yeah, and then maybe beyond that, um, I think uh, your presentation really made clear that um, you had a very successful couple of years. Uh, of, of working in this institution now, um, and I wonder, I mean, what, were, what is not becoming so clear maybe yet is where the boundaries were. I mean, you did probably also have hard discussions one in a while, once in a while where um, you could not realize something that you were proposing, so I would be interested in hearing also about this maybe, maybe just one example, as I think we are running late at this point. Kann ich schon, kann ich sagen, ähm, ob, wir, ob wir auf ähm, Gegenwehr gestoßen sind oder was wir nicht realisieren konnten, aber ist eigentlich nichts. Um, I think, I mean, for a simple language, we just have to agree to disagree, uh, I think, because I mean, that's what um, uh, many institutions are doing, but it um, may, I think it's just not necessary, there is, uh, like, our conviction is that uh, there is no information lost in the simple language. It just says it differently. And uh, um, this is our experience. So um, I think if it's a purely informational, no um, uh, um, uh, informational text, um, and then we can argue about this an informational text, or was a curatorial text, or was like, um, obviously, um, but I think, yeah, that's just, um, yeah, the understanding we have that there's nothing lost. We have so many texts that have been translated that we wrote um, that are just describing shows and we had the feeling if she, did, if the translator, so the translator translates it and then it goes into a, uh, a group of people uh, who proves it um, and says, oh yeah, I still don't understand this or I understand this with it and then it comes back and then, she, and um, so we had experience that every time that we gave something that was translated wrong, we weren't very clear. So then the text was mostly also confusing them because we were just like, you know, using a bit of art here in there. Um, but I think, yeah, it's just something to, to further, um, I think, yeah, discuss also um, what it means, also what a text means to curators. I think it's just a discussion that we should have. I mean, for us it was a, a decision, yeah, to have these texts are information for the audience and was the idea to give back more power to the audience and also power to the artwork itself because I still have the feeling that the art world is so academic mostly and uh, the texts are written that just a, a, a small group of uh, intellectuals can understand and the, the intellectual value is in the artworks itself and if we just uh, make more clear because some of the uh, some curatorial texts are still really poetic and there are interpretations and they uh, say what you want to you should think or you should feel and that uh, makes the things simpler doesn't mean that the artwork is getting simpler it's more like open up to 
to have a to have the chance to have an own point of view on the situations. This is what yeah, we why think, but why? yeah, 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 because to don't have the difference because we are living in a hier hierarchy world, and we we saw from the beginning. I mean, maybe later we think differently again, but from this point we wanted to make a change, and then you have to make a ca change consequently, and. If you have like two different versions, we have the feeling it's more like here are the smart ones and they are not the smart ones to make it clear. And uh, and we had the feeling no, it's more like these kind of texts as this institutional text, they are just information. The information need to be clear. What you need to understand the artwork, and then if you're interested or you have the capacities, you can go deeper and deeper. And we also put out like have readers with more information. Now we are doing the catalog, etc. Et and but what are the basic information you need to experience the artwork? And for us, it was really important to make not these differences um, from the beginning to like um, how to say like leave the throne of authority at this point. If I could say so, I yeah. And I think just shortly because we're running out of time, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I think so. There was no project that we couldn't um, couldn't do that we wanted. Um, we have realized uh, everything, but still, obviously, we have obstacles. I mean, when we said we, Jan and I, started as a team, always as this idea of like speaking already with two voices, and then uh, starting a conversation with the whole team. And obviously, we had to learn that people who before the visitor service was not seen or so didn't see themselves as art mediators but they're the first people that are met by the by, by the audience but it was not the self-understanding so we we it took us now years to come to this point where we actually can talk topics also and uh, and learn so I, I think um, this was something that we totally underestimated how much we have to learn together to get to know each other to actually talk and the same is obviously with um, connecting with the city with different institutions and initiatives it just also through COVID but also just because building relations and trust uh, takes much more time to open up so and that all these and that structural changes don't come uh, within a year I mean and I think that is just something that we um, we're very naive also uh, about in the beginning because we had this program and we had the money and we had now we're gonna go and now it's gonna be all processual and participatory and we'll open up and obviously it, it, it we are now at a point where we somehow earn some fruits of what we have done but nothing that um, but so there was nothing that we couldn't do yeah. yes thank you um, but on the question of Simple language. Yeah. You have to, because I was part of the process. Yeah. To my voice is legit. I mean, the, uh, yeah, I think that both both sides are correct. You know, the, the parts that sometimes they are pretentious, you know, uh, overly verbose language that used to describe the work. On the other hand, um, if understanding is your aim. Yeah, you have to mediate it in some way. But both sides also encounter problems, you see. So, because if you are dealing with a simple language, you are effectively dealing with translation. And when you are translating, you know, there are things that are lost. There are things that are gained. But, you know, is the meaning, you know, carrying through? There's, it's a, it's a, it's a fact. So, once you, uh, I think that there's also, you know, this, um, there's a potential paternalism there. You see that if you are translating, especially in this context, you, are, you have to presume that they don't understand. I do. How do I, you know, simplify it? And that simplification process also has its own, uh, um, you know, presumptions. And so, uh, because really, if you want to learn anything, you can't. It doesn't matter if it's my philosophy. If you're interested in it enough, you can. So, how do we make room, like was said, you know, for both sides? And uh, the problem is to privilege one over the other, to privilege the person who might not understand. If they don't want to understand it, they won't. You know, they can't. But at the same time, you know, uh, how do you 
from the institutional angle, I can get it because, you, you know, uh, yeah, your public duty requires you to do that. But generally speaking, you know, how do we encode our um, the experiences of artwork? Because really, what we are doing is we're describing things we don't know. That's what art is. We don't know, you know. So when, when something emerges out of an experiment, we're all finding the language to describe. And encountering the work is also dealing with it, you know, with different tools and apparatus. So making the space for, you know, language um, to, 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 to mediate, but also like a direct encounter, all of these clashing, right? And so uh, having this confluence of things, I think works, in my opinion. I think, but, yeah. yeah, but I think, you know, it's, it's actually, especially it's, it's talking about the text. The text comes back and um, it's a learning language. It's a language that um, allows you to learn, for example, complex words. They're not taken out. They're explained what it means. So why can we then not have a conversation about the text and saying when it's purely informational um, and um, the, the artist works with this material, da, 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 um, why can we not then talk about this text, what is missing f for you as a, as a writer, rather than, um, it's not paternalist, I mean, these, there, there are studies who, what kind of people, like how many yes, people. Probably, what is actually being translated, the thing being, the text being translated, who wrote it? For example, uh, us or Bettina. Yeah, in this but case, curatorial, so the curatorial um, text information, you know, others, yeah. Audience. But just the just ones on the fly flyer, so much for informational flyer, like when we um, uh, say this is the annual program and this show is by this artist, he works around these topics, duh, 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 or um, the floor plan uh, where there's uh, small information about the different works that that you see and or the information about the events that we have in the Kunsthalle on, on the website. It's not essays um, that we, we translate or um, publications. But um, yeah, but I think it's especially it's an understanding of what No, yeah, what you yeah, what you so think. That was the point. Yeah. So yeah. I think we can agree that uh, you know Nobody has the answer, right? Like yeah, yeah, really totally. Exactly. So totally. If we take a step in one direction, we create potential problems, which we have to come to terms with. And these are the excesses, you know, that come with actions and decisions and, you know. Uh, so also in terms of learning, this is one area that I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm interested in by way of um, exhibition making, uh, institutionalizing, because you see that with this model, this red clay model, we have um, an artist who, if you engage, will give you very lofty, sophisticated uh, interpretations of what he's doing. But at the same time, that doesn't become the overarching, you know, uh, uh, you know, means by which you enter his work. You can literally just come here and live with the work, and 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 be okay with that layer. If you're if you're interested in more, you engage him, you find out more, and if you want to, you know, so these are the things that I'm talking about. And then you know, as we've hinted, so it's about access and opening up the the the, the possibilities of interpretation. Because at the same time, learning is happening individually. Uh -huh. yeah. You can't teach anybody what they don't want to know. Uh -huh. yeah. So these are all things that are there, but. Mm. Maybe I'll give <laughs> just one word. We have a. <laughs> yeah. I really have to pee. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, very briefly. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, uh, this is actually one point the individuality, actually, and the subjectivity also. And I think this is also an important point in um, perception of, of art. And I. Mm, I tend to avoid to uh, write completely only informational texts normally. Um, I think it always goes a little bit beyond and we have our own subjective views, of course, and the visitors might share or not share this point of view. Um, I mean, I come myself from a working class background and I had not seen any art until uh, quite late, actually. And, um, and still, I think we can f have a feeling for it and be drawn to it. and. And I think it's important to also challenge an audience and uh, to have this uplifting experience. Um, 
yeah, that's that's what I'm Yeah, but <laughs> really uh, interesting because yeah, it, I mean now it looks like you're fighting about the text which is no, no, printed no, already. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but it's really it's yeah, really I mean it's a. Uh, but see, for everybody, huh? This was really our process. Yeah. I, I mean, it's <laughs> more. This yeah. is our process, you know, and, and it's and it's it works, a but. it's a question of perspective uh, perspectives in in theory. Before you you're talking or both, I would say it's more like I think the curatorial text doesn't belong to the artwork until the artist says it belongs to the artwork, and that's why it's an informational text. But I totally understand your point of view of an individual perspective. The, the uh, viewer or the visitors is getting on your own, but maybe then to to sink it further, we need more text, we need more voices uh, who are talking about an art piece. And in this case, it was just one voice, and we had uh, as an institution, and maybe also, but also before I was a freelance a creator, would be the same maybe hard uh, uh, hard feeling about to make it uh, write the text simpler because it's not i i understand it's not that we ever wanted to take away your voice it's more like a technique we're not able to use so far because we are trained to write really complex and difficult and blurry text mostly this is my experience um uh, and so but maybe it's also interesting to see it from the other side, to have more voices talking about an art piece, to have it written down, that it's just not one institution, one person talking about uh, um, a moment of art, which never wanted to have a text, maybe, if it's until it wants to have a text. So... Right. Fair enough. <coughs> Inevitably, there are more voices. The journalists will pick it up, the, well, the public, like in the case of Osnabrück, you know, it was being discussed on social media. Those that hated it were hating it. You know, it didn't matter what the what the uh, you know um, the explications were, right? So, um, yeah, the hierarchies, it's 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 fine. But at the same time, you know, um, you can't control everything about by the experience. So it's it's really about just allowing it, you know, to happen. Yeah, the curatorial voice is is, is important. The institutional voice is important. You know, the, the, the audience's voice are important, the critics' voice are important, the journalist's voice are important. Because these issues are thorny, and there's no uh, one way of understanding it, you see. So, anyway, um, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Please give us a round of applause. <laughs> and um, we have an hour. Thank you. We have an hour. Oh, I've been spending text after all. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's cool. Yeah, because then it would still have had, you know, its own effects. But yeah. Uh huh. And that's also another problem, I think, you know, for exhibitions. This, this role of the explicator, you know, oh, if yeah. it's a museum, if it's the curator, even the artist. Because what you've made, you don't fully understand it. You know, so it's it's really a um, a political issue and a critical um, thing to discuss. But we have a, an hour-long break now. We'll take a break. We come back at uh, two thirty to continue programming. Thank you all for staying with us so far. We hope you know <laughs> we <laughs> this has been worth your time so far. We come back. Thank you. Thank you.